haven't done a build video for a while now, so I thought it was about time to put together something a little bit special. My ultimate seven inch long range drone. This one's built for endurance, smooth footage, and a bit of grunt when I need it. Hello, and welcome to the Whirly Bloke channel. This is the AOS 7 V5 frame, which I've dry assembled. Now I've used this frame before, and as far as I'm concerned, it's one of the best, if not the best seven inch frame that's out there. And this V5 has had a few updates since the previous version that I built. Most obvious thing being this aluminum camera cage on the front here. It's a well, beautiful looking thing. It's incredibly well designed. You've got soft and hard mounts depending on the camera that you're using. And I'll be using the soft mount for this 04 Air Unit Pro. Now the rest of the components are actually from Secure. And it's actually really refreshing to use gear from a manufacturer that's not one of the usual suspects. And with all the current state of play in China, availability is a little bit unpredictable. For example, Speedy B has only just started shipping again and most of their flight stacks are marked as discontinued. And I recently reviewed the F405 all-in-one, which is fantastic, but it's not really suitable for larger drones like this. Having said that, I've heard they've got a whole load of new products in the pipeline, which is quite exciting. For this build, I'll be using this secure Bluson A2 70 amp 4-in-1 ESC. It's a really robust looking board rated for six to eight S. So it's more than capable for this frame or even larger ones, in fact, 10 inch. This is running AM32 firmware out of the box. And at $30, it really is pretty good value, especially since it's 70 amp. For the flight controller, this is again from Secure, it's their H743 V2. It's built around the STM 32H743 processor and it features an ICM 42688P gyro, a BMP 280 barometer. It's got six UARTs, a five volt and a 10 volt back and it supports four to eight S input. It's also DJI compatible and has got eight motor outputs. It's a real all-rounder for big bills, to be honest, and that includes cine lifters. Price-wise, this comes in at $40.99. Now, for the receiver, I'm going to be using another secure product. This is their ELRS uh, 868MHz dual RX receiver. They do the 915 version as well. This is a true diversity receiver, and... It's priced at $19.99. I'm hoping this will give excellent range and re redundancy. In fact, I know it will. Now, on to the part I'm especially excited about. This is the Secure 2812 1115 kV motor. I mean, just look at it. They look like they really mean business. <laughs> And these are very high efficiency, high torque, and they're built for serious lift. So they're ideal for seven, eight, or even nine inch props. Absolutely stunning, beautifully made. And speaking of props, I'll be trying out a couple of options. These are my absolute favorite from Gemfan, they're seven by 3.5 by three V1S. These are just a very good general purpose tri-blade prop for seven inch builds, I've used them on loads and I know that they will work beautifully but I'm also going to try these 7042 by blades again from Gemfan. I used these on another build and they worked really well. They're very very efficient so I should be able to get some excellent flight times out of these. Cue the build montage. <laughs>
everything all built up. It's a pretty straightforward build, if I'm honest. So a quick rundown of what we've got. We've got the O4 camera at the front. Then we've got the O4 Pro Air unit, and that's connected into the flight controller on the cable that comes with it. This is DJI ready, so you're all good to go. The preferred UART selection for this for MSP is using UART 7, which I'll show you in a second in beta flight. This is just temporary until I button everything up. I'm actually using the dual antennas mounted on the top uh, plate like that. Then we've got the flight stack itself. Everything's wired in very nicely. Little connector there to go to that 70 amp ESC. Buried under there is a FETTEC spark suppressor, which I like to use on 7 inch or any 6S drone, if I'm honest, a 6S or bigger. Down here, I've decided to swap the receiver out for this Radio Master uh, Gemini receiver. So, this is a dual Gemini receiver or diversity Gemini receiver. Got one antenna here, you can see it's running at two frequencies, and the other one is actually mounted at the back. This is going to be mounted up sort of like that on a little mount on the top plate so that we've got the antennas with their null points pointing in different directions, which is going to give me the best that I can get for long range. That's simply wired into by plug into the bottom of the flight controller there which is very easy. Up here we've got uh, a GN... I can't remember which one it is. Which one have we got? Let's have a quick look here. It is the M9N. That's it. I don't think you can get these anymore. But I bought a job lot of these, maybe half a dozen of them, a few years ago. Um, the reason I prefer these over the M10s is simply because of the quality of the antenna that you get on these. On the M10s, it's a lot smaller. Although the spec says it performs better, I know from experience this larger antenna works really well. That's all wired up on this custom GPS mount that I've got here. And then buried down there is the Vifly GPS mate. This is incredibly useful. Not only does it uh, sort of have the Firefly Lost Model buzzer on there, so it acts like a normal buzzer, but also it's got its own little battery which powers the buzzer when you've lost it, but also it keeps the power on the GPS or on the magnetometer and the compass. Now that's really useful because it means when you're swapping batteries, it doesn't have to acquire satellites again. It knows where they were last time. And this will power this for about an hour. So when you're doing a battery swap, it's all pretty straightforward. Motors are all mounted. Very good. I've got to put the 3D printed motor protectors on here, which I'll do in a second. And uh, that's pretty much it. I've already checked that the motors are in the correct position, one, two, three, and four, and that they are turning in the right direction. Let's have a quick look at the beta flight setup. So let's just get some power on here. So I need that to power GPS. And we plug that in there. It's all good. Always very encouraging when it beeps. So let's have a quick look and see how I've set up beta flight. Uh, this is all fairly normal. Let me just calibrate that quickly. That looks Everything's beeping, wonderful. Quick look at the ports. So UART1 is being used for Express LRS. So I've got Serial RX turned on there. And then down here, we've got UART7 with MSP turned on, and that's being used for MSP and DisplayPort to get the OSD information into the O3 goggles. And then we've got GPS working on UART6. That's just enabled there fairly standard stuff. Configuration, again, there's not much that I've changed in here. Air mode, I like to turn off. I don't like it on when I'm landing. So that's only on when it's in acro mode. 
everything else is normal. Power and battery, I haven't yet calibrated this, but I'm sure it'll be fine, but I will check that before I do my first flight. Fail safe, fail safe, fail safe is currently set to drop, and once I've done my first couple of tests, then I'm gonna switch that over to GPS rescue. Pid tuning that. The real benefit of using an AOS frame is that Chris Rosser has got a whole load of presets already in the presets tab up here. And you can see I'm using the AOS 7 tune by Chris Rosser. Now I've used this tune before on this AOS frame and using a heavier battery and heavier motors, these are high torque motors, I found that actually the D-term on roll and pitch is just a tad too high. The motors aren't baking hot, but they're just a little bit too warm for my liking. So I've dialed the master multiplier down from 1.2 to 1 to 1 1.0 and that's brought these down a little bit here and that just makes it about right. We'll see when we get out and do some flying. Flight modes, that's all been set up, which I did a little bit earlier. GPS, that's all working, the stuff coming in. Motors are all good. Props in, and we're running D-Shot 600 with bi-directional D-Shot on, and I've checked that the number of magnets that we've got on here is the same as what is on the secure motors, which is 14. OSD, all fairly standard. Uh, the nice thing about running with the magnetometer is that you can put all this information up the top here, which tells you your home position, distance from home and altitude and that sort of thing, as well as speed, which is sort of useful. And other than that, I think that's it. I just need to get the frame buttoned up and uh, do a quick test in the garden and then I'll go out and fly it for real. Before I get on to anything else, let's have a quick look at the tune. So these are roll step inputs and it looks pretty sharp to me, no bounce back. Same for pitch, again pretty good. You might need a bit more work, but I keep hitting the throttle unfortunately. Next thing to try are some throttle pumps. I think the battery's getting a bit low, so here we go. Yeah, I keep hitting the yaw, uh, and that's pretty good. There's no nasty rises or dips on the pitch. And the last thing to try is a big throttle punch and then chop and see what we've got. Yeah, again, no nose rises or drops. I'm pretty happy with the tune on this. Having the AOS 7 preset in beta flight certainly helped. And apart from dropping the master multiply slightly to reduce the D-term, and keep the motors a little bit cooler, and doing a little bit of throttle profiling, it's turned out really solid. And that's largely down to the AOS frame, to be honest. It's got an impressively low resonance. You might have noticed in the OSD that the current draw is a little bit high, and that's because this is a little bit overpropped at the moment. And I've ordered some Gemfan 7030 Hurricanes, so I'll be trying out those and a few bi-blades to see if I can improve the efficiency. There's a little bit of vibration at full throttle as well. Now, I doubt it's the frame, so I'll be checking the prop balance. These days, most props come pretty well balanced out of the box because manufacturing has improved, but I've found that seven inch and larger props can still be a little bit hit and miss. Another possible culprit, these TPU frame protectors. I mean, they look great and they help prevent scuffs when you clip something, but they could be introducing a little bit of motor movement at high load, or maybe these motor bolts aren't torqued down evenly. Once you go over seven inch builds, you start noticing sort of strange oddnesses. That's because everything's bigger and little things start to add up. But other than that, I'm really pleased with this build. I've only flown a couple of packs so far, one quick shakedown and a tune and one longer flight. And I was getting around six to seven minutes of flight time, but that could easily be improved with a prop change or making this battery 3000 or 4000 milliamp hour hours, maybe even a lion pack for longer range. And 
the secure motors, flight controller and that 70 amp ESC all work flawlessly. And it's genuinely nice to see solid components from a manufacturer outside the usual suspects and they perform really well. Now I will be digging into the AM32 ESC firmware to just check the settings as well to see if there's any room to optimize for endurance. But overall, I'm very impressed. As always, you'll find links to all the components that I've used down in the description. Do let me know in the comments if you've tried any of the secure gear or if you're planning to give them a go. And if you're interested, I'll throw in a quick montage of the flight footage just to wrap things up. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.